unionist. And one of the Yay! things I'm fond of <laughs> thanks, Don. One of the things I'm fond of saying is we don't yeah, join unions just, just so that we can have a union card, Thank right? You. We join unions so we can have collective bargaining. And we don't win elections just so we can have a party on election night. We work hard to get people elected so they, they will do the right thing by us when they get into office. And that's what this is about, right? This is about making sure that everybody we voted for on November 6th, and some people maybe we didn't vote for on November 6th, um, are going to be held accountable in Washington uh, and make sure that they're fighting for the people of Pennsylvania, the people of Philadelphia, and the people who are most need of these earned benefit programs, right? right? And so that's what we're here for today. So we're also here, and since it is December, and we have, you know, a holiday village across the, the street and all that, we're here, you know, in the spirit of the season, right? Um, and so we're gonna do a little singing, I think, today, and we're gonna hear from some people. So I'm gonna start, Tim, is going to come up, right, and lead us with some songs. Okay. Oh, Tim. I, I don't know if he, he, he did know that, even though it didn't look like he did. So this is Tim Brown, and he's going to lead us uh, in, in Vote for Income Tax Equality. Everybody should have a song sheet. If you don't, we'll circulate some more. So here you go, Tim, and then we'll hear from the speaker. Okay, okay, you just stepped in. To, uh, uh, the two don't get the all. You guys can figure this out as we go along. Hold on, right? La 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 la. for income tax equality. Fa la 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 la. Cause for millionaires are a folly. Fa la 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 la. Billions more for them. Outrageous. Fa la 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 la. Treat the cap gains more like wages. La 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 la. One percent makes more than ever. La 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 la. Time to act is now or never. La 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 la. We're all for no wasteful spending. La 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 la. Give couple should catch the tax and ending. La 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 la. You guys are great. My, my gift to everybody is not singing here today. Okay, so we uh, we need some. Okay, we need some. Um, I know some folks need song sheets out there. So anybody who's passing out the song sheets, if you can circulate them in the crowd. So I should say I'm from the Philadelphia AFL-CIO, but there are a lot of people out here today from different organizations who are, are part of this. I see Alliance for Retired Americans, Fight for Philly, Woo! Move On, Move On, Pop. Um, and a number of different unions asked me, UCW, AFT, CWA, Teamsters are here. You can tell because they have their big truck here. Thank you, Jobs of Justice is here. Um, you know, and so this is um, by no means, I'm just the person who missed the meeting. That's why I'm uh, up here <laughs> hosting you all today. So I'm going to call in Terry. Terry Daniels, are you here from SEIU, Local 32BJ? Oh, was it Teddy? Okay. Well, how about, you know what, let's let's start with Robert, because I see him from Fight for Philly over here. Robert, come on in. Robert's one of our great activists with Fight for Philly, and he's going to share a story with you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hey, I'm Robert. Robert Joy. I'm with Fight for Philly, okay, and I'm out here to fight for fair. Yes. Okay, no cut, no job cut, no Medicaid cut. I work, worked over 30 or 40 years. You get what I've got, my entitlement, and that's Medicaid, Medicaid. Okay, without it, I'm lost in the dark. Without it, my children lost in the dark. My friends, my family, my pop, you know? I told me I'm glad one out here, and let's get the medical from card, let's get them up to Tommy, let's get them up to Casey. Okay, you know, let everyone do whatever we can to do to keep this thing going because we can't tolerate no cuts. All right. Oh. Woo! Thank you, Robert. No cuts. Right. So I think Robert uh, uh, tells the story of a lot of people, people who rely on these programs. And, and, you know, a lot of what we hear out of Washington is a false choice, right? We can either do this or we can do that. Well, I don't believe in an America that can only do one thing at a time. I believe in an America where we can raise revenue, create jobs, save tax cuts for the middle class, and also fight and save Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. I know we can do it. Do you know we can do it? Yeah! All right, there we go. Okay, so who do I have next? Uh, Lynette uh, from Fight for Philly, are you here? I'm just going to keep calling on people. How about Ann from Move On? Ann, are you here? Oh, great! Ann is right here. Ann from Move On is going to share a story uh, also about uh, these programs and how important they are to her friends and family. 
Hi everyone, I'm with Bhutan and Neighborhood Networks. Thank you for being here. I'm a senior. I know I don't look it, but I am. And I live in senior housing. And I am fortunate to be able to live on my Medicare and Social Security. But a lot of my neighbors have very tiny Social Security incomes. They're mainly older women. They may have been housewives and were very, very low Social Security. And they have to be on Medicaid. And it breaks my heart because a lot of them just to make ends meet have to go out cleaning houses and doing stuff like that. And they're way too old to be working that hard. So um, we cannot we cannot tolerate cuts for any of our programs. We are not leaders. We deserve it. And uh, let's get a good um, you know let's get the message out for Casey and Jimmy. Thank you. Um, I, you know, Anne, Anne said it correctly, right? These are programs that are important to, to working people, to middle class people, to people who are fighting to make ends meet and, and maybe just, you know, can't make the ends meet right now, right? Um, you know, we hear a lot of things out of Washington. We hear if we cut taxes on the wealthy, then they want, I mean, if we raise taxes on the wealthy, we're really just talking about eliminating tax cuts, not raising them. Um, we're uh, we're going to not create jobs. Well, for one thing, you know, I work for the labor movement. I don't see a lot of jobs being created anyway, right? We're doing a lot better than we were four years ago, and we can thank Congress and President Obama for that and our hard work. But, you know, we need to, um, to be raising revenues and not cutting programs that are so important to working class and middle class families. So, um, you know, we were going to do another song interlude here, but if it's all right with Tim, I'm going to skip it and bring up Ben Sears to talk, and then we'll do a couple carols uh, when we when we close it out, okay? So Ben is a friend of mine, an AFT member, and uh, he's here with the Alliance of Retired Americans, and he's going to talk about Social Security. Thank you, Liz. My name is Ben Sears. I'm a retired Philadelphia High School history teacher. I was active in AFT, AFT Local 3, and I'm now a member of the retiree executive board. And I have to tell you, brothers and sisters, this has not been easy for me, except to to the idea that I am a senior citizen. I will tell you also, this made it a little easier. I go to three different doctors. I'm lucky, I'm relatively in good health. In my retirement, the last couple of years, they have taken two precancerous lesions off my skin. I go to die. I go to a different doctor every three months. And every time I go, I show them this little bad boy here. If not for that, I don't know what my wife and I would do. I have a teacher pension. I have my social security. But without this card. And by the way, let me tell you, some people probably know this. You know that when they wrote the original uh, Medicare law in 1965, the intent was to have a Medicare like program for everybody. They thought they were afraid that it would not get past the insurance company, and they settled for the, the old folks like me. Can you hear me now? Yes. I'm trying and go back a little farther. <laughs> the original Blue Ribbon Committee that President Roosevelt appointed in 1934 to write the Social Security Bill, they saw what was happening in the country. They knew about the general strike in San Francisco and others across the country. They said, we better do something. They were going to put into the original bill a national health care component. They took it out because they were afraid insurance company opposition would kill the whole bill. So in fact, you and I and the Obama administration with a lot of help and pushing from all of us accomplished something with the Affordable Care Act that has been hanging fire for 75 years. So don't let anybody tell you that we can afford to do without this. Look, and on the, on the question of creating jobs, just another second, and I know Liz talked about we can create jobs. I like to put it a different way because, you know, Senator Pat Toomey, when he was running that campaign, he would say, 
I ran a restaurant. I corrected you. I, I, what do you do? I, I created 50 jobs or 100 jobs. No, Senator, you have it backwards. You owned a restaurant and you couldn't make it go without 50 workers or 100 workers. Yeah, that's right. That's what you needed. Yeah. And the best way to solve what is this, this so-called deficit, and the best way to fix Social Security if it has a problem, is to put the country back to work. As President Obama said when he argued for the American Jobs Act, we need the American Jobs Act times 10. He said, we have work that needs to be done. We have workers ready to do it. So let's get on this. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Don't let anybody tell you that you are too expensive, that you can, they can't afford to take care of us. Let's keep fighting for this. Did I mention that I'm a member of the teacher Union too? So my 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 brother from the teacher. Thank you, Ben. And um, so I uh, I just I want to take a moment of personal privilege here just to say how proud I am of the labor movement, um, the progressive movement of everybody here and everybody who's not here for good reasons um, uh, today. Because you know normally you know around holiday time we all want to spend time with our families and do other things and be on vacation like my good friend John is on vacation today coming out to our Yay. event um, and but, but we know that it's too important on November 6th you know it was a good election we sent a message um, re-electing President Obama with a, a progressive uh, group of allies right young people workers uh, African American Latino allies from all across every uh, walk of life um, uh, re-elected the president but we didn't just do it to re-elect him, right? We did it so that we can make sure that people are taken care of. And that's what today is about. And we need to keep keep being out here every two weeks, every day if we need to. Whatever it takes to make sure that everybody who needs to hear our voices hears our voices and that we will not, we will not allow tax breaks for the wealthy while the poorest among us lose their programs that take that mean that they can get medical care, that mean that they can pay their bills, that mean that they have some they can retire with some dignity. We won't stand by and let that happen. Not on my watch, I know not on your watch. And so every day we're gonna be out here as long as it takes. So I will say, uh, so here's what we're gonna do. So I'm, I'm taking a little personal privilege since they gave me the mic. So anybody who uh, who wants to be part of the delegation, don't go away because we're gonna sing a couple more songs here. But anybody who wants to be part, part of the delegation to go deliver the cards, if you haven't filled out a card yet to Senator Toomey or Senator Casey, um, this gentleman here in the middle, the tall guy, I say he's tall, I'm five feet tall, everybody's tall to me, right? But, uh, but <laughs> the tall guy's in the middle here with the cards. Um, please fill out a holiday card for Senator Casey, Senator Toomey. Make sure they hear your voice. This is important. They hear my voice all the time. They, they're sick of hearing my voice. They need to hear yours. And I appreciate everybody taking the time to sign these cards and fill them out. And then we're going to have delegations go and deliver them today so that their office staff gets them and they get over there. So after we sing our songs and wrap up here, if you want to be part of one of those delegations to go, then just gather over here um, behind over here and we'll separate out groups to walk. They're both walking distance. Uh, a couple blocks from here, okay? So, on that note, I'm going to turn it back over to Tim, and he's going to lead us in a couple more, <laughs> in a couple more songs. He keeps looking at me like he's surprised, like I'm shocking him. He's doing that to me on purpose. So, I just want to thank everybody again. Thank you for the hard work. I know we're all going to be out here again in the not-too-distant future. Happy and safe holidays to everybody. Take it away, Tim. Everybody know that song, Oh Christmas Tree? All right, we're going to sing a new one for, for the 99%. It's called O Fiscal Cliff. Everybody ready? O Fiscal Cliff, O Fiscal Cliff, a 1% invention. To put the burden on our backs, that is their bold intention. They move with haste and speed to manipulate the media. Oh, fiscal cliff, oh, fiscal cliff, it's time we paid attention. Oh, fiscal cliff, oh, fiscal cliff, it could have been avoided. The rich had only paid their share, our debt would have been voided. They own the banks and still they rob, and then they offshored all our jobs. 